In this example, we want to use the rational zeros theorem to find all of the real zeros of the polynomial function. Use the zeros to factor f over the real numbers. Our polynomial function is f of x equals 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. So with the rational zeros theorem, it says that if our polynomial function is going to have a rational zero, it has to come from a very limited list based on our leading coefficient, which we call q, and our constant term, which is what we call p. So it's we're going to start off with listing the factors of these um, numbers. So the factors of p equal 1 are going to be plus and minus 1. The factors of q equal 2, those are going to be plus and minus 1 and also plus and minus uh, 2. And the rational zeros have to be among the list of p over q. So what we do is we come up with all the possible combinations of these factors of p over q. So our potential rational zeros are going to start off with this 1 in the numerator. So it's plus and minus 1 in the numerator. And this plus and minus 1 in the denominator. And then we only have one other possibility for the denominator, and that is a plus and minus 2. So we have plus and minus 1 over plus and minus 2. If we reduce that, we end up with 1 over 1, which is 1. And that could be plus or minus 1. And 1 over 2, and that could be plus or minus 1 half. So we have four potential rational zeros. So we are going to now test out these zeros using our remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says that if we get a remainder of zero, then we have a factor of the polynomial. Well, I guess that would be the factor theorem, not the remainder theorem. So I've got my graphing calculator here. We're going to use it to help us work out this math. And in the y equals menu, I'm going to type our function 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. Well, I've typed that wrong. Let me try it one more time. 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. And I'm going to use my table. And before I use that table, I need to go to table set. I want to switch this over to ask mode so that I can specify these potential rational zeros to test out. So um, in my table, I'll substitute in a 1, negative 1, a 1 half, excuse me, that should be 1 half, and negative 1 half. So the remainder theorem says that if I substitute these values in here, I'm getting the remainder when I divide by the factor of x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1 half, x plus 1 half. If that remainder comes out to be 0, then we know yeah. we've identified a factor of the polynomial. So because this remainder came out to be 0, we've identified a factor of the polynomial to be x minus 0.5. So we've identified one zero of the polynomial, a factor of the polynomial, and we can now 
reduce the polynomial by that factor. So I'm going to divide x minus 1 half out of this polynomial using synthetic division. So I'm going to put 1 half here, the coefficients of the polynomial 2, negative 1, 2, and negative 1. We bring down the first term and multiply by our number. So 1 half times 2 is 1. We add these guys together to get 0. 0 times a half is 0. Add these guys together to get 2. 2 times a half is 1. And we get our remainder of 0 again. And now we have reduced our polynomial down to 2x squared plus 0x plus 2. And I know I can write my polynomial in factored form. x minus 1 half times 2x squared plus 2. So I can factor this polynomial a little bit more. Both of these have a 2 in common, so I can factor that 2 out. And that would leave me with x squared plus 1. And uh, we don't really like to write these fractions in here, so I'm going to distribute this 2. And that would give me 2x minus 1 times x squared plus 1. So we've written the polynomial in its factored form. And um, I want to finally make sure that I've identified all of the real zeros. So let's set these factors equal to 0. So if we set 2x minus 1 times x squared plus 1 equal to 0, I would have 2x minus 1 equals 0 and x squared plus 1 equals 0. I add 1 to both sides to get 2x equals 1. Divide by 2 and that gives x equals 1 half. With the other factor, I subtract 1 on both sides. That gives x squared equals negative 1. Take the square root of both sides. And that gives x equals plus or minus i. So we do have one real zero of one half. This is the one we identified earlier. But the other zeros that we have, have identified here are not real zeros. These are complex zeros. So we only have one real zero of one half, and we have the factored form of our polynomial. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.